you know, um, when you uh, when you when you learn something, I know all of you have 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 been tremendous up to now, right? How is it? You know, it, it's it's not very easy to. First of all, it's not very easy to want to learn something new. After that, it's not very easy to continue to want that. And there are two things about a, about a topic, right? There are two things. One is what you learn, mathematics, physics, chemistry, commerce, law, medicine. The other is the attitude for being a doctor. The attitude for being an engineer. If you're a civil engineer, you have to have the attitude of, of going under the raging sun, right? You can't say, no, no, it's too hot. I will not build that bridge. So there's some attitudes, right? A doctor needs to have patience. A doctor needs to have listening skills. A doctor needs to have certain attitudes, needs to do a lot of research. A doctor needs to take risks, right? Every profession, uh, a chartered accountant needs to be very thorough, detailed, right? Because I'm trust, I, I'm giving my entire, entire accounts to him. And if, if, if he makes a mistake, I'm going to be in trouble. He doesn't want me to get in trouble. For instance, my auditor is very, very thorough. I always ask myself, I would never have made an auditor, never. Because you have to go through each and every payment, debit, credit and all that. So what are we learning? We are learning that every profession, every time we do some work, there is a particular attitude that we bring to that work. Right? So therefore, what we are learning is that all professions need, a, need an attitude, which is why sometimes, sometimes we are misfits or we don't like something, not because we don't like that work, but because we are not tuned to the attitude that work involves. For instance, I still remember my first job was in the Taj Coromandel. I was a front office assistant and I just loved it because my attitude to people is I love to meet people. But you put me behind a desk and you have killed me. So what, so what I was thinking is that maybe it's an opportunity for me to share with you what should be the attitudes for being a biomimic. So we are going to have this every session for you. We are going to have skills and mindsets. What are the skills? What are the mindsets? For every session, so that there's a bonus section, you know, all these movies have, after the movie is over, there's some more left, right? Everybody is waiting for that. So therefore, the, yes, the, the learning, basic learning is over, but we are saying, no, we want to give you some more things to learn. It's actually not a learning, but a sharing of views. In all my lectures, in all my lectures, I do not start anything without talking about this particular book that I read. It's about this particular man who I, who I, who I invoke before I do anything in my life. He is from India. He achieved greatness in his subject. He, he, he made he made the world notice mathematics. Unfortunately, he died very young. Born of very poor parents, struggled a lot with his academics. But in spite of that, never lost his love for mathematics. Any guesses? I'm sure most of you have guessed, right? Most of you have guessed the name of this man. Should I even, I mean, should I call him man or should I call him genius? Let's stick to genius. So, who am I talking about? I'm talking about Ramanujan, talking about the, the greatest mathematician India or the world has known, right? And I'm going to talk to you about Ramanujan and I'm going to try and find out how Ramanujan can inspire us to become biomimics. What is it that we can learn from the life of Ramanujan that will make us big, big biomimics? Not only biomimicry, I'm telling you, almost in every subject I have taught, I have, I have brought in the example of Ramanujan and people see the connection immediately. Okay, what is the story? First of all, let me, uh, let me acknowledge that, that the book that, that I, that I, that I have, 
lots of books I have is just one copy. It's called The Man Who Knew Infinity by Robert Canigal. I have it with me in front of me. Right? It's a book. If ever, if ever you meet me, and then um, I, I will probably give you a gift of this book. Because this is a brilliant book. I think every one of us must have it. Of course, there's a fiction, a lot of fictional, because it's a it's a it's a fictional biography, but Canigal has done a brilliant job. Okay, so what is wh why I'm not going to tell you the story of Ramanujan because all of you know that all of you know that uh, Ramanujan was born of very poor parents, that he he struggled through his academics, that he he did not really do very well in school or college. By the way, he studied in Chennai, in a college called Pachepas College. And I'm not going to get into it because they're all there. You can always Google Ramanujan and find out. But what is it that I want to tell you? I want to talk to you about, I want to talk to you about this one. I want to, what is this? Well, this is a letter. Why am I talking about letter? Right? A letter is available for everyone to see. What was India at that time? Colonial, right? We were, we were being ruled by the British. And why is this letter so important for me that I have to bring it to you? Because look at the contents of the letter. I am going to give you about two or three minutes to read that letter. Let me just start the reading for you so that you continue. All right? So, dear sir, I beg to introduce myself to you as a clerk in the accounts department of the Port Trust Office at Madras on a salary of only 20 pounds per annum. 20 pounds per annum. I am now over 23 years of age. I have had no university education, but I have undergone the ordinary school course, right? I'm sure now you're reading it along with me. Now I read it, I read it, I come to, look at, look at this one, right? Look at the second paragraph, look at the second paragraph, look at the confidence in the second paragraph. It's growing. He's talking about his work. Very recently, I came across a track published by you styled Orders of Infinity. Again, he's giving some more details. And then he actually, he says that what he has found and he wants an opportunity to, to, to meet with or, or, or meet with Hardy. Now, who is Hardy? A renowned British mathematician. Who is Ramanujan? A young 21, 22 year old not very popular, not very famous, very, very a clerk in the Madras Port Trust. And why am I showing you this letter? Because for me, for me, this letter is about bravery and self-belief and confidence. A 22-year-old 20, talking about his, his confidence in solving a problem to writing a letter in, in British India, when there is no fax, no, no WhatsApp, no mail, but writing a letter and trusting and believing that what he is saying is right. And that is why I want to bring this letter to this, this, this ex to topic of Ramanujan to you, because when you, when, when, when you, when you start doing something, especially in biomimicry, Self-belief that what you are doing is right is very important. Of course, you will, you, sometimes you will be right, sometimes you will be wrong. But you must believe, you must believe that whatever I am doing, I am doing it with a lot of passion. I am working very hard at it. And I have a lot of self-belief to say that this is, the, this is the problem and this is the way I want, I, I want the solution to be. Many people come and give you advice saying no this and then you listen to their advice, you listen to the advice. But the whole, the most important thing when you're doing something very, very powerful, when you're solving a world's problem is to be completely believing in yourself, convinced that what you're doing, the solution that you're, that you're coming out with is right. Or if it's, if it's going to have some sort of, you know, if, if, if it's, ha has to have a correction, you will, but you will persist and you will be able to come back with a great solution. For me, that is the, 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 the power of Ramanujan's letter. And of course, I would, I would request you to please read that book because, for instance, there is one page I wanted, to, I wanted to read from so that you, you know, can you believe this, okay? 1913, Ramanujan writes to Hardy and on page 358, when, when, ha when Hardy was asked about the greatest, his greatest contribution to mathematics, Hardy was asked about his greatest contribution to mathematics. So there is this, uh, there is this Paul Erdos who has recorded this. 
So when Hardy was asked, what is your greatest contribution to mathematics? You know what Hardy said? Hardy said, the discovery of Ramanujan was Hardy's greatest contribution to mathematics. You know, um, I, I, I don't know how, how better to express the bravery and the self-belief of this man. So for me, why I brought in Ramanujan's story now is to say that every one of you here is a, is a master unto yourself, right? You you'll have to believe that the work that you're doing is powerful enough, that the work that you're doing is important enough, that the work you're doing is, 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 is right enough for you to continue in that work, whatever you do. So therefore, yes, doubt is important, but not self-doubt. And self-doubt, therefore, is the problem with self-belief. Right? You must have a legible, you must have legitimate doubt, you must be able to clarify that doubt because it, it tells you that you are okay to, to correct yourself. So the, the story of Ramanujan is to inspire us, is to inspire us to continue this journey and, and say that what we are learning now is the beginning of a new science, that with this science we will be able to change the world.